right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Lee Ashton, who is in London in the UK. Hey, Lee, how are you doing? Yes, very good. Thank you. Everyone's happy in London at the moment because the sun is shining and it's hot. Yeah, well, I know that feeling, you know, being from Ireland when people ask me when, uh, you know, what's summer like in Ireland? And I say, well, it could come for a week in February. So who knows? (laughs) (laughs) So Lee's an author, speaker, trainer, coach and founder of the Sales Consultancy. But what we wanted to talk about today was sales mindset, which is a subject dear to all of our hearts. And, and talking with Lee about, you know, sometimes salespeople know how to do some things, but they just don't do them. So um, let's talk about that, Lee. What are some of the activities that salespeople know they should be doing, but they don't really do? Well, it varies from salesperson to salesperson. But ironically, one of the ones that comes up ever such a lot is picking up the phone to people, Uh, you know, and and being in sales is all about having that conversation. So, so for me, um, it, you know, it it can be something from picking up the phone, it could be talking with somebody new, it could be even going to a networking event, it varies. But the most important thing to realise is the reason that they don't do it, even when they do know, is because they have something up here that stops them. And sadly, a lot of people think, well, let's just give them more behaviour training. Mm -hmm. Let's just give them more. In fact, I was having a meeting um, in recent weeks with a multi-billion pounds or multi-billion dollar organisation. And I I said, we do mindset training. I said, tell me a bit more about them. Well, we train them how to do stuff so they have the confidence to do it. And I said, well, the two (laughs) don't. It equate. Right. Telling someone and showing someone how to do something doesn't mean they will because behavioral training focuses on the action and the result. Right. And mindset training focuses on the thinking and the feeling. Right. So let's let's explore that a little bit more. So what what goes in what components of a very str- are there of a very strong sales mindset? What differentiates somebody with a strong sales mindset from somebody who doesn't have one? Okay. The most common things are they're willing to have a go and they're okay if it doesn't work out. So um, they see that as a learning experience. So it's someone who doesn't let their ego get the better of them. You know, if they get it wrong, they've learned. Um, So a lack of ego is one, Um, a a willingness to give it a go, Um, a determination to perfect as they go along. They're normally proactive by nature rather than reactive. You know, they will just jump in, um, often sometimes without thinking. So they, for me, are the most obvious ones to look out for. And it doesn't mean that someone is more extrovert or, you know, sometimes it's the quiet ones that have that determination, the willingness to give it a go and a lack of ego so that if they fall on their face, they're not going to be upset by being laughed at or humiliated. Yeah, like they say, sometimes it's the quiet ones you want to watch, right? <laughs> that's for sure, that's for sure. Um, so, let's, so let's talk a little bit more on on this idea of, of mindset, of giving it a go and perfecting things, because let's face it, we live in a culture today, uh, what I call the shortcut culture, right, where we have zero patience, we everything has to be instant gratification. So I feel today that people give up too easily on things. Like they try something, it doesn't work. Maybe they try to say, no, it doesn't work. They just give up. Instead of, like you say, like learning from the experience, maybe tweaking it, maybe realizing that they need to do it over a longer period of time. Is that something that you come across? Oh, absolutely. Honestly, John, it's incredible. How many people will try, salespeople will try an approach once, and if it doesn't work out, it says it doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. So I share in all of my trainings, I say you have to try something at least three times to know even how to tweak it. <laughs> right. 
So, so yes, you're absolutely right. It is all about instant gratification. And I also think that organisations are a bit like that. Uh-huh. So they can be putting pressure on their salespeople to perform without giving them time to develop. So sales leadership is one of the key components when it comes to giving people or creating the environment where it's okay to try and not get it right, mm-hmm. creating that coaching and development culture, that learning culture, because without that, any salesperson that possesses the qualities that are going to make them more about let's give it a go and let's see how it goes, eventually will be battered down because mistakes are not allowed. It's a culture of perform, succeed, do it straight away. So it's also down to the organisation to make sure that they've got that culture. Yeah, no, that's that's an excellent point because uh, you know obviously organisations are made up of people who have the same uh, <laughs> instant yeah. gratification and short attention spans. Um, how much do you feel that um, sales maybe over the last while has become impacted uh, by this concept of you know we all love inbound, right? We we love inbound. Everybody loves inbound, and you love getting inbound leads and everything, and that's an important important component of, of most mm. businesses nowadays, a critical component. But in some ways, it's also made people, it's given people an, <clears throat> an excuse to maybe not do some of the other activities that they traditionally would do, like the outbound, like you said earlier, like picking up the phone, like doing the hard mm. yards and networking. You know, how much do you think that's had an impact? Oh, I think it's had a huge impact because it's like any muscle, if you don't keep using it, you kind of lose that confidence and ability to use it. So even if people get a lot of inbound, I think it's really important to find ways to develop new relationships because let's face it, the bigger your pipeline, the more likely you are to succeed. I always say to people, never rely just on inbound leads because you never know what could happen. If you've got a strong pipeline of relationships you're developing, then you are so much more likely to have that kind of safety net if things go wrong in one market or another market or a client. So so I think that it has had a huge impact. And in fact, some of my clients actually have targets that are for new business. Mm -hmm. So to keep their salespeople engaged in that activity which is all about generating their own leads mm-hmm. and, and how much do you feel like that this is now something that's uh, you know there's a feeling that, that that a lot of people are getting now that um, people are looking are rebounding a little and looking more and more for real engagement as opposed to automated engagement or whatever and they're really looking for those connections now so how important do you think it is for salespeople going forward to rediscover some of those things like networking events like like picking up the phone like like just engage like switching on their camera on a on a go to webinar meeting so the person can actually see your face i mean how how important do you think do you think those are coming back I think they're crucial factors i think honestly john that they have been really important all the time Mm -hmm. but People have, it's kind of slipped off a lot of people's radar because of that whole speed, transactional type selling, Mm -hmm. where now industries are realizing that it is all about the relationship. And actually, it's not just about getting an order from a company, it's about how can we develop the relationship to get more orders from that company. So for me, you know, I'm old school. There was no internet when I started in sales. And I've always said sales is a two-way conversation. Even if it starts two-way on an email or, you know, I use LinkedIn a lot, um, it starts two-way online, you have to eventually take it offline and speak person to person because it is impossible to gauge their reaction and responses in any other way. So, um, and I totally agree with you. So, so getting back to the mindset element, how much of mindset is 
all is just pure confidence and the the ability to kind of bounce back because let's face it, I mean, sales is a brutal business at the best of times, uh, and that bounce back ability, if there is such a word, uh, how how critical is that for a sales mindset? The ability to be able to pick yourself up off the floor time after time. I think it's vital, and I think that. If you look at every experience as a learning experience, Mm. it's really easy to pick yourself up because that means every interaction gives you something positive. So having that mindset is all about, oh, well, I didn't get it this time, so how am I going to make sure it's better next time? Um, And you wouldn't have got that piece of this gold nugget without having failed. So you're absolutely right. People need to realise that that's just another no. And to be honest, I think that having no's is part of being in sales. You know, no salesperson on the planet has ever got a 100% conversion rate. Mm -hmm. The more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes is what I think. Mm -hmm. So just expect that you're going to get no and treat each opportunity as um, an opportunity to practice and tweak. Right. And I think you've hit on a, a, you've hit on a very important point here, um, Lee, and that's that idea of learning, tweaking, practicing because I don't think and this is and this is true of sales and it's probably true of, of other disciplines as well I don't think that people spend enough time investing in themselves I mean right a lot of people sit around and wait oh well the company will train me if I need to be trained or whatever but at the end of the day who, who's who's most responsible for my success yeah for sure you know that's a really interesting point because I listen to audiobooks and read Mm -hmm. every single day and my reading is generally psychology because I've been in sales quite a long time I'm not saying that I couldn't learn something new in sales but what happens with me is I focus on success and psychological books and that and I always think well how could I use that in sales so I come up with my own new ideas but honestly if you want to get on in sales if you want to be successful in life full stop it's your responsibility to develop your thinking in any area of your life because mindset just isn't about sales or career it's also about relationships outside of work it's about health it's about fitness it's about everything you only have to look at the sports world Mm -hmm. where people are reducing their physical training and increasing their psychological training and getting better results so honestly, if you even if you only read for 15 minutes a day or a page a day, by the end of the year, you will have read an awful lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons we started Sales Pop was to bring this all together in one place and give, you know, bite-sized consumables to salespeople. Because I agree with you, because there's a lot of, I mean, and I think some of the people listening and watching should ask themselves, right, we all have recreational activities or hobbies or things we like. I mean, so so, you know, my next door neighbor is a huge golfer and he's out the backyard all the time, you know, with his net up, you know, practicing his his golf swing. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots of other people who do things with their, with their hobbies. But do you put as much practice into the thing that puts bread on your table? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, it's so true. And I, oh, Jack Canfield says, if you watch an hour less television a day, mm-hmm. what could you do? Yeah. I mean, I don't watch television because, you know, because I'm always either reading or, or having fun somewhere. Yeah. Um, but seriously, what are people doing in their lives that actually don't have any benefit whatsoever? That even if you cut out a bit of that and did something that generated more happiness, more knowledge, more skill then I think that the world would be a much happier place. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Lee. And I, and I think, uh, I mean, you hear the mantra, you know, all the time people are saying, oh, I'm so busy these days. Like everything, we're so busy. Everything moves so fast. But I always think that if you did an analysis, you know, even of myself, you did an analysis of somebody,
somebody's day, you will find that there's a lot of extraneous stuff. It's just because it's so accessible, right? You can go yeah. on, I mean, you talk about TV, you're, now you have, you know, Netflix and, and streaming. I mean, you can go on, not just watch an hour, you can watch a whole season in one evening if you care to, right? Yeah. And you have all of this stuff firing in all the time. And I really do believe if you, if you cut out a lot of the extraneous stuff and focused, you'd have more time. And I think that's probably a mindset issue too, right? Yeah, for sure. And you know, you mentioned Netflix. <laughs> I absolutely love Netflix. Sure, but me too. I watch documentaries. So if you are going to choose to watch television, watch something that is really going to enhance you or feed you in some way. So, um, so yes, but you are right. I bet if everybody wrote everything they did down and how much time they spent on those things, they'd be really surprised. In fact, there was a study some years ago, and I can't remember the stats, but they got salespeople to um, write down all their activity, and they only spent less than a third of their time on selling. Yeah, and I can totally believe that, and, and, and absolutely. And I think part of it is, you know, when they don't really – uh, prioritize like look at what are the mm -hmm. getting back to what we started talking about is like what are the activities that really help you in sales and what are the activities that really don't and start to yeah. cut out those activities yeah I call them income producing activities mm -hmm. when I'm doing something if it's an income producing activity I'm feeling really good about <laughs> it you know today I was like picking up the phone I was sending emails to my prospects that I couldn't get a hold of and that makes me feel really alive and sometimes I'm doing an email and thinking what am I doing Stop. <laughs> get back to IPA <laughs> <laughs> exactly and yeah, I, you focus on that stuff you cannot fail yeah, no, and I think that's a great one to end on. So when that little email message, you know, uh, alert pops up, sometimes you should say, actually, I don't need to answer that immediately. Actually, I don't need to read that immediately. I need to st uh, stick with this more important task. So, Lee, before we go, I wanted to give you a chance to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and how they can find out more about you. Well, I work with sales teams who know what they should be doing and are not doing it. But I not only work with salespeople, I work with the sales leadership mm -hmm. team so that they know how to create that learning, coaching, development environment and really help their salespeople to grow and generate more happiness. So you can find me at uh, sales-consultancy.com and if you have any questions at all, that you can contact me there. Great, Lee. Always a pleasure talking with you. Always insightful. Hope you have a great day. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Bye. Bye. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.